The title of the lecture is Balance. But such titles are usually misleading because balance in Saudi Arabia is different than balance in Sweden, for example. The things that they think is balance, we think that it is extreme. And the thing that we think is balance, they think that it is extreme. So first of all, we have to set the ground rules. And the ground rules are that Islam is a religion of balance. No one can doubt this because it is the verdict of Allah Azza wa Jal. Can you question Allah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطًا Thus, we have made you a just or a balanced nation. So Allah Azza wa Jal is the one who made us balanced. Now, in order to have an idea of the meaning of balance, because sometimes people have different views, Muslims, about balance. And this is due to the fact that not all Muslims are 100% true Muslims. And this is not from me. This is a saying of the Prophet والسلام, who told us that the Ummah of Muhammad will be divided into 73 division, sects, cults. All of them are in hell except one. So this is problematic. Am I from that one and all of you are not? Or are you all from that one and I am not? How would I know? How would I come to know if I'm from the saved sect or not? The Prophet gave us, gave us a description. He said they are the jama'ah. So they are the majority. But is majority measured by number, by quantity or by quality? Ibn Mas'ud, may Allah be pleased with him, the companion of the Prophet والسلام, said, Al Jama'ah is what coincides with the truth, even if you were alone. And this means that what matters is the quality, not how many are there. Because Allah Azza wa Jal tells us in the Quran, وَمَا أَكْثَرُ النَّاسِ وَلَوْ حَرَصْتَ بِمُؤْمِنِينَ Even if you try your level best, the majority of people will not believe. Allah says this. So it's not the quantity, it is the quality. And that is why Allah Azza wa Jal described Ibrahim, peace be upon him, to be an ummah. He was an ummah. What is the meaning of ummah? Anyone knows? Hmm. Nation. This is one of the meanings of ummah. Quran, Allah Azza wa Jal mentions the word ummah in four different meanings. One of them is an imam. Inna Ibrahim kana ummatan. Ibrahim was an imam, someone to be followed, a leader. And at the time of Ibrahim, there was not a single Muslim on earth except him. Yet Allah described him as an ummah. So was he, the, was he the majority or not? He was on the truth. So he was a single person among all the kuffar. Another meaning of the word ummah is time. And this is mentioned in Surah Yusuf. وَالدَّكَرَ بَعْدَ أُمَّةِ the man who was in jail and was set free, he remembered after a while, a period of time. A third meaning of ummah is religion. Inna wajadna aba'ana ala ummah. We have found our forefathers on a religion. And the fourth and last meaning of the word ummah mentioned in the Quran is a nation, a group of people. As in Surah Al Qasas, Ummatan uh, min uh, nas He found a, a, a group of people trying to water their flock and cattle. So, in short, in order for you to be among the ummah, the saved ummah, the balanced ummah, 
you have to coincide with the truth, with the haqq, which only comes from Quran and Sunnah. And that is why if you look at Islam, the religion, not at the Muslims, the people who practice it. If you look at the essence of Islam, not a single kafir would reject it. But when they look at us, how we practice it, they will definitely think that this is not a valid religion. Islam is a religion of balance. It addresses the soul as well as the body. And this is why whoever works on purifying his soul, he will be elevated close to the level of the angels. And those who only serve their bodies and neglect the purity of the heart and of the soul, they will descend and go down until they're close to animals. Whenever you don't have Islam to uplift your heart to the levels of angels, you take off your clothes. You want to show and expose and you follow your desires. And this balance between the soul and the body is mentioned in Sahih al-Imam Muslim. A beautiful hadith, you all know it by heart, inshallah. Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with him, met one of the companions and his name was Hanzala. And this is Hanzala al-Usaydi or al-Asadi. He's different than Hanzala uh, uh, Abu Amir al-Ghasil, the one who died in the battle of Uhud and the angels washed him between heavens and earth. No, he's different. This is Hanzala al-Usaydi. He, met, he meets Abu Bakr, Abu Bakr, what's happening? Hanzala says, Hanzala has become a hypocrite. A'udhu Billah. Why are you saying this? He said, Wallahi, when we are at the side of the Prophet ﷺ and listening to the Quran, he reminds us of Jannah, he reminds us of Nar, of Hell. We feel different. But the moment we go back our homes, we meet our wives, our children, and our business, we do not recognize our hearts anymore. Abu Bakr said, Wallah, this is a problem. I feel the same way. Now that makes two of us. Let's go and consult the teacher, the Mu'allim. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So they go to the Prophet and he repeats the same statement. And the Prophet said, By Allah, Hanbala, if you were here as you are with your families, you will shake hands with the angels in the streets because the level of Iman is so great and it's consistent that you're with me like you are with your families, you will see the angels in broad daylight, but an hour and an hour, meaning that an hour for your heart to purify it and an hour for halal entertainment, not for haram, not an hour for your heart and then go to the disco. Let's have fun and woo -woo, party. No, this is not what the Prophet meant. He meant that you have to what? You have to attend your things that you have to do for your body. Eat, drink, make business, make money, put food on the table, see your children, have quality time, which is not related to Quran, Tafsir, etc. Now, how would we know the balance? How can we tell? It's very easy. Whatever Quran and Sunnah checks the box as being balanced, it is balanced. Whatever the Quran and Sunnah tells us is good, it's good. And whatever Quran and Sunnah tells us is bad, it's bad. Because your intellect differs with mine. People have different uh, orientation. They come from different cultures. You may think this is good. I think it's bad. So who will draw the line and tells us, no, this is extreme and this is balanced. It has to come from Allah, the Quran and the Sunnah. Now, a beautiful hadith also in the Sahih. You all know it, inshallah, by heart. And this hadith has two narrations. One, a story between Salman al-Farisi and Abu darda May Allah be pleased with them all. And one with the Prophet and Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As. So which one do you want? 
Okay, different opinion between the scholars as usual. So we'll, we'll, take, we'll take the one with the Prophet because wherever the Prophet is there, there is Barakah. So Amr ibn al-As, one of the great companions of the Prophet who embraced Islam at the eighth year of Hijrah, and just before Fath Makkah. So he was very late. And before that, he was a very uh, uh, strong enemy of Islam. He becomes a Muslim, one of the wisest men of Arabia. His son is Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As, one of the great narrators of the Hadith. Abu Huraira and Abdullah ibn Amr, they have equivalent in the number. But Abdullah writes and Abu Huraira memorizes. So the father finds a beautiful uh, 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 woman from a good lineage of Quraysh and he weds her to his son Abdullah. A couple of weeks later, he checks on his son's house. He meets his, his, his daughter-in-law. Ha, my daughter, how are you? She said, MashaAllah, how's Abdullah? Oh, Abdullah is the finest of all men. He sleeps, he uh, fasts all day <clears throat> and prays all night. MashaAllah, he's the best of Muslims. Amr is a smart man. When a newlywed fasts all day and prays all night, this means that he has no intention to give his wife her rights. So Amr immediately goes and complains to the Prophet I will not speak to my son. He's a hopeless case. If I tell him, said, no, no, your father, you don't pray like I do. He looks down at me. So I go to the Prophet. He goes to the Prophet. The Prophet calls him. Amr, uh, uh, Abdullah, how many days do you fast a month? He said, Oh, Prophet of Allah, I fast every single day. The whole year. Fasting every single day. Ihna, we come and fast Ramadan. Said, oh, Alhamdulillah, it's finished. Imagine, one more day I would have died. But he fasts every single day. He said, No, fast only three days a month. Oh, Prophet of Allah, I can do more. Seven, ten, fifteen. That's it. Don't exceed 15 days. One day, one day off. This is the Sunnah and this is the Wuj's fasting. Abdullah, how many hours do you pray at night? He said, the whole night. Sheikh, don't you watch the voice? Don't you? Said, no, <laughs> Prophet of Allah. And this is astonishing. I found here on TV some of I don't know which country, some of our sisters wearing the hijab and singing and dancing. And what kind of balance is this? Sheikh, let's understand balance, then we can apply this. Anyhow, so Abdullah, how many hours you pray? The full night. Akhi, what kind of a man is he? Did he used to sleep at daytime? But he had an objective that is way, way, way beyond our job description. His objective is Jannah. So the Prophet told him والسلام, not to do that. And he told him how long or how, uh, um, what is the way of reciting Quran? And he said, I finish the Quran once every night from cover to cover. We come in Ramadan. I ask brothers in my masjid, MashaAllah, how many times do you finish the Quran per year? I said, Shaykh, I started doing that six years ago in Ramadan. But inshallah, this Ramadan, I will complete it. If you open the Quran, you will find dust on it. This is a shame. This is Allah's words. But we are unfortunately not putting effort. Abdullah ibn Amr, every single night he finishes it. 30 times a month. The Prophet said, no, finish it once a month. This is the minimum. One juzu every night. He says, no, I can do more. 20, 10, 7. And he stopped at 7. In some narrations, he stopped him at 3 and told him, no one can understand it beyond 3. Yeah, and he finished it every 3 days. So, what's the conclusion? The Prophet ﷺ told him a beautiful statement. If we can write it in gold and put it in front of us in all uh, uh, places we go to so that it 
would be our motto in life, that would be good. The same statement was said to, by Salman to Abu Darda. Abu Darda complained to the Prophet, the Prophet okayed it. What is the statement? The Prophet said to Abdullah, Ya Abdullah, inna li rabbika alayka haqqan. Allah has rights over you. What are, are Allah's rights? Tawheed, prayer, etc. Your body, in, an, an, uh, in another version, your eye has rights of you, meaning health. Your guest has rights over you, meaning social commitment. And your wife, your family has rights over you. So give all due rights. Now this is balance. I could be the best businessman in the world. I can be rich. I can be filthy rich. I can have huge, wonderful hotels like Donald Trump maybe. <laughs> but I will compromise with what? With Salat. Akhi, Salat al-Asr, uh, I have a meeting. Salat al-Maghrib. Wallahi, we have a conference call. We cannot answer. Uh, Aisha, so you pray at the end of the night. Maybe you pray one night and seven days you miss. I could be the best athlete and win medals and trophies. But I will not see my wife and my children because I'm in camp all the time. And I won't be able to make money except if I'm a soccer player, football player. They, these are the people who make money. But badminton, you make money badminton? Nothing. They're, they're the poorest thing. Look at them, skinny, mashallah. They, they don't even find food to eat. May Allah Azza wa Jal give them hidayah. You, I can, and also prayer, fasting, forget about it. I can be the best sheikh. Praying all night and fasting all day. Sitting in the masjid with beads, 1,000, saying Allah, 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 Allah. The, the, like some of these people do. Huh? I had a car. It's a GMC car. It, it, it is 1994 model. Very old. MashaAllah, it was always remembering Allah. <laughs> when you turn it out, it says Allah, 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 Allah. <laughs> Beautiful car. It, and it stayed with me for ages, but I had to sell it at the end. So, I could do this, but always those who are into religion in the masjid they don't have money because they don't have time to make business etc so there is always an imbalance i can be don juan i can be uh, casanova with my wife you know taking my children every night to restaurants to fun fairs they love me i'm the best father i'm the best husband but on the account of not going to the gym, so I have diabetes, cholesterol, <laughs> high blood pressure, because I have to tolerate my nagging wife to be a good husband. And I cannot have money because I'm spending most of it on them. And I can't have business and I cannot learn religion because every time I want to go between Maghrib or Isha or after Isha to the dars in Al-Khadim, my wife says, no, I have to go and see my mother. So this imbalance makes our life difficult. The Prophet is giving us the formula, alayhi salatu wasalam, be balanced. Wallah, and I swear, inshallah, truthfully, if you manage to balance these things, you are the happiest person on earth.